Welcome to Cryptoon, your weekly source of Web3 knowledge. Don't forget to like, share, and click subscribe. Want to learn more? Sign up to our free newsletter. Link in the comments below. You heard about Overdare teaming up with Circle? They're shaking things up by letting game creators get paid in USDC directly in the game. Overdare, huh? That's the one Neva Z and Crafton, the PUBG folks, are behind. Using that fancy Unreal Engine 5 and all? Exactly. And they're not just about the tech. They're using NFTs to make the gaming experience something else. With Circle's wallet, creators can now earn stablecoin for their work. It's a big leap toward using crypto in everyday gaming. Sounds like they're paving a new road for creators to cash in on their work without the usual hassle. Plus, stable coins mean their earnings won't be as wild as the crypto market. And get this, Circle's playing by the rules, making it easier for creators to access their dough. Overdare's CEO, Henry Park, and Circle's co-founder, Jeremy Allaire, are both betting big on this moving digital entertainment to the next level. With all the buzz around blockchain gaming tokens lately, seems like they're onto something. Heard Pixel's value shot up big time after hitting Binance. Right? It's clear there's a future where game developers and players benefit more directly from their contribution. Overdare and Circle are just starting, but it looks like they're setting the stage for a whole new gaming era. Dude, have you caught that documentary, Five Months with Logan Paul? It's all about his crypto zoo NFT mess. Paul's out there claiming it wasn't a scam, even though folks lost cash. Yeah, I heard. Paul's sticking to his guns, saying he bit off more than he could chew, but denying it was a scam. Claims he's out half a meal himself. Wild, right? He even mentioned hitting a real low point, thinking about ending it all because of the backlash. Ain't the first time he's been in hot water. Remember when he said he'd go after CoffeeZilla and others for making him look bad over CryptoZoo? True, but he backpedaled on those threats real quick. Also promised a $1.5 million recovery plan for those who got burned. But there's a catch. You gotta drop any claims against him to get your refund. Sounds like a tangled web. Guess we'll see how it all shakes out. Hey Clyde, did you hear about Snakey Cat's new deal? iCandy Interactive and Animoca Brands are letting folks play for free and dishing out over 900K in dollar tower tokens as rewards. Free, you say? That's a nice change from the usual $300 tower tokens to play. Sounds like they're aiming to get more folks on board. Exactly. It's all about dodging obstacles and collecting food as a virtual cat. Plus, the dollar tower tokens you can earn are part of the bigger tower gaming ecosystem, like in Crazy Kings and Crazy Defense Heroes. Bringing back the old snake game, but with real rewards, huh? Clever way to mix a bit of the past with today's tech. They've even teamed up with Coinbase's L2 base to cut down on those pesky transaction fees and speed things up. It's a solid move for making blockchain gaming more accessible. Seems like Snakey Cat's leading the charge in this Web3 gaming wave, making play to earn a real thing for gamers. For sure, it's a game changer, showing how blockchain can spice up traditional gaming with some real stakes. Yo, Clyde, did you catch what's dropping at NFT NYC? In Vienta Group's launching Mad Dog Jones's Fallen Gravity Collection. They've got this panel speaking with extraterrestrials, NFTs in the galaxy. That's sounding epic. Heard a bit, yeah? They're diving deep into how NFTs are changing the game, opening up new worlds of opportunity, and making memories that last, all with a space twist. And they're rolling out space-centric NFTs with Mad Dog Jones, hitting us with animated artworks and even messages sent to space, man. Collectors even get a flight cert from the SS. That's out there. Fallen Gravity is about pushing boundaries, mixing art, music, and tech. Scott Cullithers talking big about launching this mission with Artemis Music Entertainment and Nifty Gateway. Totally. And there's this piece, Unknowable Dimensions, letting 500 folks mint unique NFTs, all vibing with star songs based on cosmic data. Space and art coming together, huh? Makes you think about the big picture. Mad Dog Jones and the crew are really shooting for the stars with this one. Did you catch that the whole liquid restaking scenes ballooned to almost $8 billion? I saw that. All these platforms like Etherfi, Renzo, and a bunch more are letting folks keep their hands on their cash while still throwing it into the pot. Etherfi's leading the pack with over $3.2 billion locked up. Renzo's not far behind at $2 billion, and even the smaller fish like Claystack are getting a piece of the pie. It's all about that eigenlayer tech, right? Letting people restake their ether and beef up security for other networks. 
Exactly. Eakin Layer's sitting pretty with over $13 billion now. They opened up a window for restaking with these tokens, but it's a tight squeeze. Still, these LRTs are finding ways to keep the ether flowing. And folks are lining up for the chance at dual rewards from Eigenlayer and the LRTs themselves. Plus, they're doling out extra points left and right. Stake through one platform, and you're raking in benefits from two. Did you hear Telegram's now letting folks buy ads with Toncoin? Really? That's quite the move. Using crypto for something practical inside an app like Telegram. Yeah, and they're giving half the ad revenue back to channel owners. You can start advertising with just a few Toncoins. Choosing where to place those ads too, huh? That's handy. And pulling out rewards without any fees is a sweet deal. Telegram's betting big on the ton blockchain. They bragged about its speed and how it handled a ton of transactions super fast during a test. Pavel Durov, Telegram's boss, has been teasing this for a bit. Said only a sliver of channels have tapped into ad money so far. Durov's thinking it'll start a cycle where creators reinvest in their channels or cash out. Toncoin's value even jumped a bit recently. Crypto making waves in the ad world. Times are changing, Jeremy. Welcome to Crypto Mumbo Jumbo, Dakota. Today's slang, HODL. Well, the slang HODL originated years ago from a simple misspelling by a fella named GameQB on a crypto chat board back in December 2013. He meant to say he was holding on to his Bitcoin because trading wasn't his strong suit, but ended up tying hodling instead. This term caught on quicker than wildfire in dry brush, turning into a sort of battle cry for crypto enthusiasts to hang tight onto their investments through thick and thin storms and sunshine. They even went ahead and claimed HODL stood for Hold On For Dear Life, making it clear it ain't just about sitting tight. It's about riding out the rough patches with grit. For folks who've been in the game for the long haul, sticking to their guns and hodling through the crypto market's ups and downs has often paid off. It's more of a mindset, you see, acknowledging that while the crypto market's as unpredictable as a spring thaw flood, there's merit in holding steady rather than trying to chase the wind. Ben Gagnon from BitFarms likened it to a recognition that, sure, there's money to be made playing the short game but there's just as much, if not more, to lose. Bitcoin, with its hard money design, tends to shake off daily fluctuations like a dog shedding water after a swim. With all the price jumps and dives mostly just being the world's freest market reacting to the goings on in real time. The HODL community is all about steadiness, urging folks not to cash out at the first sign of a price jump or hang up their hats when the numbers dip, reinforcing the value of patience and resolve in the whirlwind world of cryptocurrency. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, keep pushing boundaries and exploring the digital cosmos. This is Clyde. And Jeremy signing off. Catch you in the next episode.